one of the most important thing in transfer pricing is whether two companies or two entities are associated enterprises. The reason for this is that transfer pricing provisions are applicable only when two entities qualify as associated enterprise. So in this example, uh, what we're going to look at is under various situations, whether two companies are associated enterprise under different criteria. So based on the following data, you are required to ascertain whether Chapel Link and Hethel India Private Limited are associated enterprises. So you have two companies, Chapel Link and Hethel India. Generally, why I draw these diagrams is because it is much, much more easier to identify transactions. In respect of each of these criterions, assume each one of them on a standalone basis. So basically, uh, in respect of each of these transactions, you need to see independently without actually getting into the details for the other, whether the two entities are actually associated enterprises. And uh, this is part A of the question. Then you have B. We'll come back to it a little later. So first, let me do it like this. I would just go through the question. So nature of instruments or particulars of transactions, Hethel India, held by Chapel Inc. So this column mentions as to what exactly does Chapel Inc., which is the entity outside the India, owns out of the total value of Hethel India. Then there are certain numbers which are given for Chapel Inc. And what is also done by Hethel India is also given as a part of this particular matter. So now if I look at it, the equity shares of Hethel India are 10,000 shares and Chapel Inc. is owning 2,400 worth of these shares. Now there's no additional information which is given to us so we can assume that this represents the nominal value of the equity share capital. So if you look at it, what is held by Chapel Inc. is 2400 out of 10,000 which basically constitutes 24% of equity share capital of Hethel India. Now we know that 24% is less than 26% which is the minimum required to be associated enterprise with the other entity. Therefore, purely on the equity share basis, the two entities will not qualify as associated enterprises. When I look at Chapel Inc, the total share capital is 20,000 out of which 4,600 is held by Hethel India, which is 23%. Now again, because this is less than the total shareholding prescribed, even they will not qualify as a related enterprise under this criteria. Moving forward, uh, you are given that the book value of assets is 500 crores of Hethel India and 5000 crores for Chapel Inc. Now, and the loan taken by Hethel India is 340 crores out of which 200 crores is held by Chapel Inc. Now, if you remember, there is one criteria where you compare the amount of loan taken by a company from a related party or from an independent party and if it exceeds a particular limit, then the two becomes related party. In this particular case, the percentage of loan that has been taken is actually 200 is the amount of loan taken from Chapel Inc. So because we are looking at the two parties, only the relevant portion has to be considered. And the book value of total assets is 500. When you divide this, you get it as 40%. Now the criteria is 51% or more should be there before the two can become related party. In this case, since it is 40%, the two will not be related party because of the fact that there is an intercompany loan between the two parties. The third one is the guarantee given in respect of borrowings. Now, when I look at the guarantee that has been given for 30 crores, how much are the total borrowings? The total borrowings is 340 crores. Now this is definitely less than 10%. 10% of 340 is actually 34. And if the guarantee has been given for 30, then this is less than 10% of the total loan. And therefore, the two parties will not be related party because Chapel Inc. has given guarantee for Hethel India. The next criteria is 
around the directors. So the total number of directors of Hethal India are 8, out of which 3 are appointed by Chapel Inc. The condition is that more than half of the board of the directors should be appointed by the other enterprise. Half of 8 will be 4. Now because in this case it is less than half, therefore the two will not be related party on the basis of appointment of director criteria. If you look at the other side also, the total number of directors for Chapel Inc are 10, out of which 4 are appointed by Hethal India, which is again less than half of the board of directors and therefore even in this case the two will not be related parties. And let's look at the last part. The total revenue from sale of Hethal India is 500 crores. You are informed that the percentage of raw material as a cost of sales is 80% which means that the raw material consumed by Hethal India is 400 crores. Out of this, it is informed that inter-party purchase of raw material is 356 crores, which is 356 divided by 400. This will be 89%. The condition is 90% or more of raw material required by one enterprise should be purchased from the other enterprise. In this case, again, because it is not 90%, it's less than that. Therefore, the two will not be related party even on this account. So effectively, if you see, in none of the criteria, the two have become related party. The next question is, which transactions will be covered under transfer pricing provision if Chapel Inc. held 30% of equity share capital of Hethal India? If they were owning 30%, then it is more than 26% and therefore the two will be a related party. Now, what I'm telling you is one of the most important rules in transfer pricing, which should be considered. And that is that if you become a related enterprise, associated enterprise or a deemed associated enterprise under any one of the criteria, then all the transactions you have with that party will be considered for transfer pricing analysis and the arm's length price of that uh, transaction will need to be developed. Let me repeat it. If two parties are related parties by application of even one of the criteria, then in that case, all the transactions between those parties, let's say for example, even the interest on loan that might be given, the guarantee fee that might be given, the price made that might be paid for raw material, all those will be covered under transfer pricing regulations and the arms length price would need to be determined. With that, we come to an end of this question. The solution to this is available in your study material. Keep safe, stay safe, and wish you all the very best for your exams. Till we see you for the next case study.